All right, so as promised, I was gonna do a video on the ACAA for those who have difficulty perhaps um, reading, uh, for perhaps people who absorb information better in an auditory way. So um, that's why I'm doing this. So let's start by what are these initials? The Air Carrier Access Act is the ACAA. So sometimes it's hard for me to remember, what is it, <laughs> air, <laughs> aviation, no, it's Air Carrier Access Act, which is the ACAA. So this is really, this opening paragraph I think is important for you to know what does the ACAA cover. So um, the Air Carrier Access Act, 49 USC, uh, prohibits discrimination on the basis of uh, disability in travel, okay? Uh, the Department of Transportation, DOT, uh, has, a, has a rule defining the rights of the passengers and the obligations of the airlines under this law. So it's a law, it's not a suggestion. <laughs> so this rule applies to all flights of the U.S. airlines and to flights to or from the United States by foreign airlines, okay? So they are also included. The following is a summary of the main points of the DOT rule. Title 14 CFR Part 38382. <laughs> the CFR is the um, it's a federal, federal regulation part, so it, that has a uh, code of the federal regulation, and that is very, very detailed, line by line. It is law, it's complicated to read. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I decided not to go there to the CFR. So this one is a summary, uh, and I won't read absolutely everything in every paragraph, but I will put I will read one or two lines per area. So, prohibition of discrimination practices. Airlines may not refuse transportation to people on the basis of disabilities. Airlines may exclude anyone from flight if carrying, carrying the person would be inimical to the safety of the flight. If a carrier excludes a person with a disability on safety grounds, the carrier must provide a written explanation of the decision. Okay, so, so that gets really touchy when they do that. Airlines may not require advance notice that a person with a disability is traveling. Air carriers may require up to 48 hours advance notice for certain accommodations that require preparation time. Uh, example, uh, res resp respirator hookup, you know, people who carry oxygen. Uh, transportation of electric wheelchair or on aircraft with less than 66, 60 seats, sorry. <laughs> My brain is a little fuzzy today. Uh, Airlines may not limit the number of persons with disabilities on a flight. Airlines may not require a person with a disability to travel with another person, except in certain limited circumstances where the rule permits the airline to require a safety assistant. Airlines may not keep anyone out of a specific seat on the basis of a disability, or require anyone to sit in a particular seat on the basis of disability, except to comply with FAA, uh, FAA foreign government safety requirements. So for instance, you would not, as a person with disability, be placed in the right at the exit, the emergency exit door, <laughs> so, <laughs> due to your disability. <laughs> so they would not place you there. All right, accessibility of facilities. 
new aircraft with 30 or more seats must have movable aisles, armrests on half of the aisle seats in the aircraft. New twin aisles aircraft must have accessible lavatories. New aircrafts with 100 or more seats must have priority space for st storing passengers, a passenger's folding wheelchair in the cabin. Aircraft with more than 60 seats and an accessible lavatory must have an onboard wheelchair, regardless of when the aircraft was ordered or delivered. Airlines must ensure that airport facilities and services that they own, lease, or control are accessible in the manner prescribed in the rule. Other services and accommodations. Airlines are required to provide assistance with boarding, deplaning, and making connections. So this is really important because this has been a oopsie a few times with some people. Assistance within the cabin is also required but not extensive personal services. So where level entry boarding is not available, there must be ramps or mechanical lifts to service most aircraft with 19 or more seats at US airports with, with over 10,000 annual employments, okay. Disabled passengers' items stored in the cabin must conform to FAA rules on the storage of the carry-on baggage. Assistive devices do not count against any limit on the number of pieces of carry-on baggage. Wheelchairs and other assistive devices have priority over other items for storage in the baggage compartment. Now here we've had some issues because that storage compartment, there's one that you know stands up and uh, sometimes the stewardess put their place, they put their things in there, their suitcases and things. So sometimes people have asked for that space to save their, to put their wheelchairs and the stewardess have said no. So you need to remind them of this regulation. Airlines must accept battery-powered wheelchairs, including the batteries, packaging the batteries in hazardous materials, packages when necessary. The airlines provides the packaging. Airlines must permit a passenger to use his or her portable oxygen concentrator during the flight if it is labeled as FAA approved. Airlines may not charge for providing accommodations required by the rule, such as hazardous materials, packaging for batteries. However, they may charge for optional services, such as providing oxygen. Other provisions concerning services and accommodations address treatment of mobility aids in assistive devices, passenger information, and accommodation for persons with vision or hearing impairments, security screening, uh, communicable, communicable diseases, and medical certificates and service animals. All right, so now we're going to go to administrative, administrative provisions. <laughs> Training is required for all for airline and contractor personnel who deal with the traveling public. Airlines must have available special, specially trained complaints resolution officer officials <laughs> to respond to complaints. That's the CRO that we've talked about in, in, previous, in previous sections. 
so it's the CRO, complaints resolution officials, to respond to complaints from passengers and must also respond to written complaints. A DOT enforcement mechanism is also available. Airlines must obtain an assurance of compliance from contractors who provide services to passengers. So that means um, they contract with the people who uh, help with wheelchairs when you don't bring your wheelchair and you use an airport wheelchair. Those people are third party. The airlines contracts them to help you know, bring passengers to the gate. So um, the issue here is that the airlines need to make sure that they are compliant with all that they do, so. Okay. Public awareness campaign. There was a public awareness campaign to ensure air travelers with disabilities know their rights. So I'm going to put that in there. Uh, I think I had made a sheet already. So, uh, so it just you know enumerates your rights. I think there's ten of them, or twelve of them. So <laughs> that is uh, the a summary of the ACAA Act. And then I will put the picture up of the of your rights. I'm hoping this was helpful, you know, reading the, um, the act itself and then to have your Bill of Rights. I think to, to kind of have the, the Bill of Rights in your mind, you know, will be <laughs> probably more helpful than, than the reading of the act itself. Uh, just know that I will provide the link of the page that I used and you can always go to the CF CFO, uh, so, but that's the, you know, the Code of, of Federal, the CFR, sorry. It's the Code of Federal Regulations, which is diminute details, detail by detail. And it would drive me crazy, but if someone is a lawyer <laughs> wants to go in there and read it, you know, <laughs> the links will be there. <laughs> It, it's, it's not fun reading the, the CFRs because they're so, so detailed. Um, and, you know, for a reason. Uh, so the airlines stays in, stays in line. <laughs> and they know that. So anyway, I'm hoping this was helpful. If there's anything else I can do to bring to your awareness, you know, the, the ACAA. Uh, let me know. I think this is helpful that you have a kind of a, a general idea. And I think what's most helpful is, is the Bill of Rights because it, it summarized all in, in 10 points. So, um, you know, and, and to, be, to be aware of the ADA, to be aware of the is, is just as important as being aware of the uh, ACAE. And you might say, well, Lisa, I don't, I don't fly. Well, there's other parts of the DOT that has your Bill of Rights when you travel by train, when you travel by a public bus, when you travel by, you know, and if we want to see that as well, you know, I'll look into it. Uh, but we all have, you know, rights when we're traveling in public, um, in, in public transportation. All right, folks. Um, I'm hoping truly that this was helpful, and if you want to help me, uh, just uh, click uh, uh, the like button and to share also helps, and any comments, any experiences you want to share 
with others, feel free to post them. All right, take care, be safe, and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.